Welcome, geeks and nerds, girls and boys, to a brand new episode of geek to me Radio. Tonight, a full show. We have Michael Harrow joining us from the Hero Complex, talking about the brand new facility that you'll be able to check out soon in St. Peter's. Later on, we'll have director Dean Israelite talking about his new movie, Little Wings, starring Brian Cox. Finally, Sandy King Carpenter and Cullen Bunn talking about the new graphic novel, Long Haul. We're talking to All that and more, stand by. Comics and movies and video games. Star Trek and Star Wars will try to explain The matter of matters for Hogwarts houses One ring rolls the mall To be the greatest Pokemon master You must catch them all You must catch them all Driving around the greater St. Louis area tonight, listening to us on the Big 550 KTRS. Hello to all of you. If you're streaming us either on the website or the KTRS app, we appreciate you doing just that very thing. If you are trying to watch tonight, Joey V, my executive producer, is out on vacation. So we will have no video for the next two shows, tonight and next Sunday. But if you're hearing us after the fact in the podcast form, then you don't really care about the video. But I do appreciate you finding us there. Hopefully you subscribed by now. I'd love to say five-star review. That always helps us with search engine optimization, which is always very important to us here at geek to me Radio. We appreciate all of you listening, all of your comments on our social medias, and we look forward to bringing you more content each and every Sunday night. We are going to go right to it because we have a jam-packed show. My first guest is Michael Hera, and he's joining us to talk about the Hero Complex. If you live in the greater St. Louis, St. Charles area, and you're a superhero <laughs> fan, you're looking for someplace fun to go, this is going to be the destination to check out. Michael, thanks for joining us tonight. Hey, James. Uh, glad to be with you. So I, I was I met you today in person at Quad City Con uh, there in St. Charles, the comic book show. And I remember seeing your Facebook ads pop up and we were kind of talking with you and Jonathan and telling me that you have you've got your private events you're doing right now. But the big grand opening, tell us a little bit about uh, the, the general public, when they can come out and start checking the place out. Oh, sure. Yeah, we are super excited. It's coming very soon. We're about a month out. So the, the date to keep on your radar is April 13th. It's a Saturday. And we are calling this our soft opening um, because we're going to have everything up and running that we're, we would normally have on any other day, right? Um, but we have another bigger event coming later in the summer on June 29th that is going to be our huge grand opening um and there's going to be all sorts of stuff i can share that with you um at some point but uh just getting the doors open yeah one month from now we're we're gonna we're gonna open up to everybody very very cool and i can't remember who i was talking to but someone was telling me that you were you were going to be doing this not you specifically but hey there's people who are going to open up this really cool place right there off of youngerman road in st peter's so talk a little yeah. bit about the, the 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 genesis of this whole idea for the hero complex oh sure that that's fun one of my favorite topics uh so, you know, just to give like a little smidge of history, uh, my family, you know, 20 years ago, we're from Chicago and up there we had a few comic book shops and, you know, it's something we're really passionate about. It's always been a part of our family, really tied into the community. And we made some decisions we're like, hey, we're going to shift gears. We're going to move down to St. Louis. We're going to, you know, close that shop and or those shops. And uh, ever since then, we're always like, this is what we love. You know, wouldn't it be cool? What if we would do this again? Um, and so it was kind of always a passion project that we had in conversation, like, wouldn't it be cool if we would open up something else again? This is what we love. And, you know, we closed right before the Marvel movie started coming out in uh, like 1999, early 2000s. And so it's like, oh, we just got out of this. Is This is getting so popular. Yeah. So, you know, it just built and built and built. And we're like, 
okay, it's time. You know, we found this uh, great building right off Jungerman's, the old shop and save. It's a huge place. And we're like, okay, this is our opportunity to put all those dreams into action. And so we kind of started our plans and uh, talking about how we could just make this, you know, if, if we were just coming to it ourselves, what would we want that to be? And uh, that's, that's how this conversation started. That's awesome. I, I love the idea. And like I said, that was perfect timing, man, because you got out at the wrong time, it sounds like, because now when you look back, I can't believe I the year 2000 is almost 25 years ago. But when you think right, of right. those early X-Men movies that we got at the beginning of the 2000s and you look to the build to where we are now of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and we're getting, you know, oh, James Gunn yeah. revamping the DC Universe, it's, it's crazy to think about. Yeah, it changed. It changed everything completely. Um, and it went from something that would be like a little niche thing to now it's something that everybody talks about, you know, every day around the dinner table. Everybody knows the Marvel movies. Everybody knows the DCU movies. Um, you know, it's just such a, a big part of really our culture now, even more than it was back then. And so we were like, oh, man, this would be so cool to, you know, like, why isn't there a place where, you can come in and really learn about the heroes or have an interactive something or play games or, you know, have it for the whole family. This thing doesn't exist. What is this? Um, you know, there's lots of comic shops and we love going to those, but how we wrap this into some sort of amazing, awesome experience, maybe like a little slice of Disney world, <laughs> you know, <laughs> here in St. Louis, you know, how do we capture that? So that's really our goal. That's what we're going for with this. So talk a little bit about what people can expect at the Hero Complex. Like, is it, are you going to sell comic books? Do you have arcade games for people to play? Is it a party space for events? Are there interactive, like, what can people expect without, I don't know if you want to give away too much before the soft or grand openings, but if you could tell us a little bit about what people can expect. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, you know, we do have some secrets because we have some things that are coming down the pipeline that are going to be super exciting. Um, but... You know, right off the bat, there's so many cool things that I can share, um, you, you know, and it's important to know that, you know, we're opening this larger space, this family entertainment center. And the thing to keep in mind is superhero based. It's all about superheroes, DC, Marvel, Image, um, anything under the sun. Right. Uh, that's our goal. That's what we're building. That's what we're working towards. So right now we have about a three thousand five hundred a uh, square foot building that is on a storefront, same parking lot, but it's like a slice of each of those uh, pieces that are going to be in the bigger building later on. So in, in the storefront, what you're going to think about is, uh, you know, half superhero store, high-end merchandise, apparel, some comics, uh, back issues, uh, graphic novels, um, th things like that, you know, uh, statues. We're going to get into, you know, some of, we're trying to get into some of the things that, are, are a little bit more niche, things that maybe you can't get your hands on, they're a little more special. Um, that's half of the space. And then the other half of the space is really a superhero arcade, so driven to, uh, or maybe a superhero adjacent, you know, but all the, all the video games that are there, pinball machines, things like that are all superhero in nature. And then we also have there, which is really, really cool, is we've leaned into virtual reality. We think that that's something that we really enjoy doing a lot, so we've invested our time and money into to integrating uh, VR experiences there as well. So uh, we have two specifically. There's two types of virtual reality. One is tethered, means you've got a cord, and you and a team of people or you by yourself can go through and play games. Um, and then the other one is like a free roam. So you've got your gear on, and you and your guys or you by yourself, you're running around uh, doing missions or shooting aliens or zombies, that sort of thing. So – uh, some really cool things. We also have this thing called flash pads. It's this giant grid of colors that, you know, uh, dance around and you, you play games, kicking, kicking light balls back to each other or, you know, trying to walk through a cavern so that you, you know, don't hit lava. So a whole lot of things for really, honestly, a little bit of everything for everybody, whether you're a, a younger kid um, or you're a, an adult and everybody everywhere in between, really there's something for everybody. And it, it's so fun. I, I just got to tell you, so we're working on our, our back VR place right now, mm -hmm. uh, the one that's free roam. And I got this concept a long time ago. It's like, man, this virtual reality thing really reminds me of the danger room for X-Men. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's, like, it's, like, 
this is, there's just so many correlations here. I was like, maybe we can lean into that a little bit. And so, you know, we have this huge printer that we can print everything under the sun. So just last week, I was looking at just different textures that look like stainless steel. It's like, okay, let's make this thing look like the danger room. <laughs> you know, let's uh... build it out. Let's let's have the circle doors like they had in uh, in the basement of the X-Mansion where you walk in there before you get your gear on to do the VR experience. Like, the whole nine yards is so much fun. And, uh, man, if I had concept art that I could share with you, man, it would, it's just so cool to see this stuff come to life. Man. I mean, it sounds like, you know, you're basically making an adult playground, which it, it thrills me to no end. Oh, yeah, right? You know, we're big kids with adult money. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so we can create all the really cool stuff. We've got all the technology to do it now. <laughs> you mentioned the superhero arcade i'm hoping because it's my very favorite thing in the entire world and if i was going to own my own arcade it'd be something i would need there the giant six player x-men arcade oh yeah yeah so you know i'll tell you what's funny we have a laundry list let me tell you our arcade right now that we're we're working with is maybe somewhere about 2,000 uh, square feet we have a, a list of items that we are going to be leaning into when we get to open the doors in our large building. And our arcade is going to increase rapidly <laughs> with that one, Ninja Turtles, uh, Halo. Uh, we have so many. It's like, okay, what can we cram? When you walk in and you see it, it's like, okay, what can we cram into this space? Let's get as much superhero stuff in there as we can. Uh, and then everything else we'll just have to say, okay, it's got to be paused for a year. We're just going to have to wait. You know, we have awesome arcades that are just sitting up the hill in our big building. You know, they're just begging to be played, but we just <laughs> couldn't fit them into this space just yet. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's there's so many things. Your mind kind of runs with all the different possibilities. And then, obviously, you've got, you mentioned all the retail stuff up front, which will be, I assume, the first thing people will see when they walk in the door will be, the, the retail stuff that you mentioned? Yeah, well, actually, you know, by design, you walk in the door, you go right to the store, you go left to the arcade. So, okay. You know, there, there's a little bit of a divider. Uh, so it, it feels like you're in a high-end comic shop, you know, on the, on the right-hand side, and then uh, the arcade's over kind of in its own area. But, you know, there's a lot of cross-pollination between the two of it. I mean, you know, the music's pumping in there, and uh, it's, it's usually pretty exciting no matter at, where you're at in the building, really. And I, I'm curious, uh, I, w I want to ask you a couple more questions, if you don't mind if I keep you through a quick commercial break. Yeah, that's cool. I'd love to. Perfect. Uh, if you're listening right now, stand by. We're going to come back. We're going to talk more with Michael about the Hero Complex. We'll also, because I know we haven't yet, so we're going to give out all the information about where you can find them on Facebook and social medias and keep track of the progress. We're going to take a very quick commercial break. We'll come right back, chatting more with Michael. If you have a question for him, you can always text us on the KTRS text lines at 84126. If you're listening to geek to me Radio on the Big 550 KTRS, please stand by. This is Kevin Conroy, the voice of Batman. You're listening to geek to me Radio. We are back. geek to me Radio heard here on the Big 550 every Sunday night, 9 o'clock. That's 10 o'clock Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific. For those of you listening out there in the world, I'm your host, James Enstall. Want we'll to make sure we tell you about our premier sponsor, which is, of course, the city of St. Charles, the Greater St. Charles Convention and Visitors Bureau. Longtime listeners will know the website, discoverstcharles.com. That's discoverstcharles.com. Uh, the weather has been hit or miss lately, but if you're looking forward to warmer weather, if you're looking forward to getting outdoors and doing some stuff, may I recommend Historic St. Charles. They have something for everyone. You can ride your bike along the Katy Trail. You don't have a bike? Pop in the Bike Stop Cafe, grab some breakfast, and then rent a bike and bike ride the Katy Trail. You can get out there and play in Frontier Park. If your dog is so inclined to play Frisbee, you can toss the Frisbee around. Just go hiking. If you're a history nut, you can get out there and check out all the historic buildings up and down North and South Main Street. If you're just looking to try some new food, my goodness, the restaurants in St. Charles will thoroughly satisfy any taste craving you have. And, of course, if you are just wanting to get out, look for some unique gifts. The Small Business 
businesses that make up North and South Main Street have a lot of great things. We just popped into the brand new store, Chuck and Lou, out there that just opened on 314 Day. Had some great merchandise in there, a lot of cool things to check out. There's always these little shops. Some of them have been there for 30, 40 years. Some of them might be brand new. There's an anime shop out there as well called Monster Roll. It was closed when I went out there, but uh, looking forward to check that one out next time. It's a great place to visit. And if you're listening from outside the greater St. Louis, St. Charles area, as I know many of the listeners are, plan a trip. Put it on your list to do in 2024. Start your trip at the website, discoverstcharles.com. Find the hotels or uh, bed and breakfast or campground, whatever your level of comfort might be, how you want to do your travel, and come pay a visit. You won't be sorry. The website again, discoverstcharles.com. That's discoverstcharles.com. As we always say, it's an historically good time. Chatting for just a little while longer here with Michael Hera, one of the owners of the Hero Complex, Youngerman Road in St. Peter's, a place you are going to want to check out. Before we went to break, Michael, I, I had a question. I'm, I'm thinking there's all this cool stuff when you see someone open it, but obviously there's a lot of hard work that goes into this for someone like you and Jonathan who are making this happen. As, as rewarding and fun as it is, what were some of the more challenging aspects? You know, uh, that is such a great question. And <laughs> I, have, I have a long list I could go through, but, you know, <laughs> just to – just to kind of narrow it down, besides, you know, just the physical labor of the construction of making it all happen, there is, you know, a great amount of just planning that goes into the creative half of, of this. Like, how do we how do we lay this out for people so that it makes sense, so that it's easy, so that it's fun, you know? And and so, you know, the, the creation process, we were really unlocking what is our big building? Like, what is that going to look like when you walk in the doors and you, you look, you're going past the, the comic book superhero shop and the museums on the left and all of these kind of very logistical things, but also just the fun creativity. Like, we're challenging ourselves. Like, how do we make this even cooler or even better, you know? And, and what, would, what would we do you know, if Walt Disney was here whispering in our ears? Like, here's, <laughs> here's the route you would want to go. Like, our, our team that we work with is we've got graphics designers, marketing guys, uh, just a whole bunch of creatives that, you know, we're all just people that love this stuff. We just happen to have real jobs, you know? Right. So, that that for me was those were some of the biggest obstacles um but really kind of once we unlocked that you know and we got okay here's the layout this is what we're working with this is what we're going to do uh, then it just started to really come come to, to come together and of course you know then you're starting to knock down walls and figure out how do we make this pop how does this work all, all that sort of fun stuff but uh, it's really been a team effort we have a lot of people working on this a lot of sweat the blood sweat and tears have gone into it for sure and to make sure that we don't get caught up at the very end here and uh, i forget if people want to find out more is it uh, is there a website social media handles is it facebook and instagram and twitter tell people if they want to find out more and take a look at what you've already got going on where can we direct people yeah totally so we are on Facebook and Instagram. So just search for The Hero Complex. Hopefully you'll be getting our advertisements because we are just blasting it now uh, just with everything we're doing every week. So you can find us, Facebook and Instagram there. And then also we have a website at theherocomplex.com. We are getting ready to do a huge uh, uh, overhaul on our website to really represent what we are doing right now. So just stay tuned. More to come. A lot of information is going to be able to be seen on there as well. And for people who might be wanting to check it out, is it going to be one of those things where – you know, obviously they can browse the retail store, but they want to go into the arcade. Is it a flat rate? Is it just they're set up with like old school, bring a bring a $10 roll of quarters? How is that going to work for the arcade? Oh, no, no. I mean, we are like leaning into the technology of the 21st century for sure. So uh, no quarters involved. Now, uh, we are going to we are maybe we'll have to work through some of the uh, retro gaming stuff that that might be a little different. But we haven't set that up just yet. So, no, you, you walk in the store, you know, check out the uh, merchandise, whatever's happening over there, you know. Um, but, you know, you want to play some games uh, very easily. You just uh, we do the whole card system. So you say you, you want to play X amount of games for X amount of money and credits, and then you just carry a little cart around, and you pretty much can unlock anything uh, on the floor. And that you know goes for the both of the VR places as well as the flash pad. So very easy to use, very friendly. You know, hold on to those cards. 
because uh, that we have redemption like the kids, you know, like to do where you can earn points for stuff um, and then uh, hold on to it for next time as well. We are also doing, if, if you were at QuadCon too, um, we have a thing going on on Facebook right now. To, if you like and subscribe on Facebook, uh, we're giving away a bunch of those game cards right now, $20 game cards, just to people. We're going to do a random um, drawing with the names of anybody who's on that list. And so if you want to have a, you know, a bunch of money to check out the arcade basically for free, definitely you know, hit us up on Facebook, and, Facebook or Instagram and uh, like it, put a comment in there. And you, who knows, you might get a, a bunch of money to go have some fun. And for those of you listening to this after the fact in the podcast form, scroll down to the bottom of the page. We'll have the Facebook link for the Hero Complex in the show notes. So you can click right there and we'll make it uh, one step easier for all of you who are listening after the fact. Um, it sounds like such a cool thing. I cannot wait. So, again, let me make sure I, I remember this. The soft opening is April 13th, the day after my birthday. Thank you for that present. Uh, the right. grand opening is June 29th. Yeah, you got it. Grand, grand opening is June 29th. And let me tell you, that is going to be a big deal. If you know what that area looks like, that parking lot will be full of awesome stuff for the whole family. It's going to be a really awesome day. I am looking forward to it. Um, I appreciate you taking the time to come on tonight and discuss it all. I'm so excited. Like I said, I, I saw the Facebook advertisement, and as soon as I did, I was like, man, I need to check this place out. And just serendipitously, I came across you and Jonathan at the uh, comic show today, so I'm mm-hmm. glad I was able to connect, yeah. and thank you very much for your time tonight. Oh, yeah, I'm glad we were able to connect today, and we're just getting started, so I, I'm happy to always share with you. This was great. Perfect. And again, for those of you interested, it's theherocomplex.com and on Facebook and Instagram at the Hero Complex STL. Michael Hara, I appreciate your time. Good luck with everything. And I'm sure we'll be speaking again very soon. Yeah, definitely, James. Thanks so much. Take care. You too. Be well. Thank you. All right. There he goes, Michael Hare. Make sure to check that out because that is going to be so much fun. And come summer, if you're looking for me, you'll probably find me at the Hero Complex. Uh, That just sounds like an amazing, amazing time. We are going to take another very brief commercial break. We're going to come right back after this. We'll be chatting. I should say we'll be sharing my interview with director Dean Israelite. Talking about his new movie, Little Wing. You're listening to Geek to Me Radio on the Big 550 KTRS. Please stand by. Yo, Joe! Hi, this is Mary McDonald Lewis, and I was the voice of Lady J on G.I. Joe. Hi, this is Bill Ratner. I'm the voice of Flint on G.I. Joe. And listening, listening to, to Geek, Geek to Me Radio, Radio is half the battle. battle. Joe against Cobra, the enemy, fighting to save the day. Welcome back to the show, Geek to Me Radio. I'm your host, James Enstall. Uh, a couple more interviews we've got to get to. This next one, uh, it looks like it's going to be a great movie called Little Wing. And we've got the director who also did the 2017 Power Rangers movie here to talk about it with us. So may I present my interview with Dean Israelite. Right now we're talking to Emmy Award nominated producer, writer, director, Dean Israelite. Brand new project coming out, Little Wing, which you are not going to want to miss with Brooklyn Prince, Kelly Riley, and Brian Cox. Dean, how are you? I'm well, thank you. I appreciate your time today. It's uh, this. I was fascinated. The more I dug into this and looked into the cast and the project, for one thing, I never knew pigeons raced. I knew about homing pigeons, obviously, from you know World War II days and things. I didn't know they raced. That's a whole new world for me. Yeah, they're fascinating, um, and that whole subculture is incredible, um, and they're, they're amazing animals. Uh, with, uh, was it hard? Obviously, when, you, when you're working with actors or working with kids, there's different degrees of what you're working with, but then you throw animals in the mix. That's a whole other thing. Did you work much with the pigeons themselves? Was that all kind of like an after thing? Like, no, no, we've got people who are going to come in and do this. You won't have to do much with it. How was it uh, having pigeons while you're filming this this project well no we had to start that preparation really early on so we ended up we ended up raising well not you know the production the 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 animal handlers ended up raising 60 of our own pigeons for the show wow uh, for the film um and then you know i decided which pigeons i thought which breeds should play the lead characters of the pigeons um, the, the leads of this movie are obviously the people, uh, but who would, would play the primary pigeons 
and which breeds, and then they started to train those breeds. And um, the pigeons are credited at the end of the film, actually, and there's about nine or 12 of them that were sort of our hero pigeons that we would rotate in and out. And, um, yeah, we were very involved in looking at, you know, what they could do at every step of the way, what the, what the animal trainers were going to be able to get them to do. Um, and it really depended on which day we were filming in terms of, well, by next week, I'll be able to have the pigeon do this. And if you shoot, you know, a few days later, I'll be able to have the pigeon do that. So it was a constant hands-on process. Wow. Uh, would that make this, well, I mean, you've done so much stuff too, between Project Almanac, uh, the Are You Afraid of the Dark series, the Astronaut series, Power Rangers. Was this one of the harder projects? Was it a new level of difficulty or uh, was this kind of like just another day at the office for you? It was, it was, I don't know, it was so rewarding. So, you know, it was more difficult in terms of the substance of the film. You know, it's, it is the most mature and substantive film I have done, um, which I was really excited for. Um, so from that point of view, um, it was challenging in terms of making sure that these characters uh, are real, that they feel truthful, that we're not talking down to the audience, that uh, the themes that the characters are going through feel like they are going to resonate with the audience and um, there's a maturity to all of that. Um, but it was such a pleasurable, honestly, experience from beginning to end that it just didn't feel, it didn't feel difficult in the same way some of my other projects have where you're just, you're just spending so much of the time like Power Rangers figuring out like, how are we, how are we going to bring Power Rangers to the screen? Like what, <laughs> you know, what's the action going to look like? What are the... What are the sets going to look? What are the costumes going to look like? You know, there's so much that goes in. What are the stunts going to be? There's so much that goes into projects like that that is really fun to sink your teeth into, but also in some ways takes you away from just the the, the personal emotional elements that you want to convey in the film. And this film is just all about the people. And you don't have to deal with those sort of genre trappings, which yeah. was which was refreshing for me. Yeah, I mean, talk about two different ends of the movie spectrum going from Little Wing to Power Rangers. My goodness. that's uh, And in the cast, we mentioned at the beginning, you've got Brooklyn Prince, who's known for Cocaine Bear and The, the Turning. Uh, Kelly Riley from Yellowstone series. She was just in A Haunting in Venice. And then the great Brian Cox, Succession, X-Men 2, Red, Good Omens. Uh, were you able to participate in the casting process or was the cast already set when you became attached to this project? No, I've been attached to the movie for six years now, oh probably gosh. trying to get trying to get the movie made. Um, so yeah, we've been there from from the ground up, and um, we we the timing just worked out so well. You know, like we we offered it to Brian as he was coming out of Succession, and he read the script, and he has a previous relationship with Susan Orlean, who had written the article. He was in her. Uh, uh, the film adaptation, which is based on a Susan Orlean book, The Orchid Thief. So he knew Susan. Mm. Um, so I think he was, I think he was interested in reading the script also because it was based on her article and he responded to the material and that was huge for us. And, um, you know, Brooklyn, I saw at the Cocaine Bear premiere and I obviously knew her work and I was already casting the movie. I was auditioning a bunch of kids and I was like, we just need to bring Brooklyn in and, and audition her. And she blew us all away. We spent a long time trying to find uh, the boy. So, you know, Shay, Shay Tafari was, you know, we, we auditioned a million kids until we find Shay. Um, and um, Kelly... Uh, you know, is in the Paramount family because of Yellowstone. And we sent her the script and she responded to the script too. So, you know, it, it sort of was just one of those things where we, at every turn, we just felt lucky that we were, we were finding all of these people and they wanted to come play with us. Yeah, that's amazing because you always, I'm always fascinated by the casting process, uh, but it sounds like you kind of really got your dream cast right, right out of the gate. That's great. Yeah, for sure. I mean, finding kids is is always a challenge because um, there's a lot of really talented kids out there, I will say, you know, um, but 
it's 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 a long arduous audition process because you really have to put them through their paces to know that they connect with the material and are and are going to be able to to deliver and to deliver across from really seasoned actors like Brian and Kelly and I thought Brooklyn and and Shay just an, an amazing job. And with this, as you mentioned, being inspired by the New Yorker article from Susan Orlean, how how involved was she with the project? Was she like, I trust you to to do this work for me? Was she very hands on in working on Little Wing? Uh, no, she was great. She was very generous. Um, she she really trusted us, and uh, she came up to set for a few days and and watched a bunch of scenes as we were shooting them and. You know, I was nervous when she was there because I obviously wanted her to really like it, and she did, and she loved what we were shooting, and uh, I think she cried once or twice at the monitors. We were shooting some emotional scenes, and that gave me a lot of confidence that we were bringing the spirit of that original article that we all fell in love with to life in, in a truthful way. And we should mention, too, Little Wing will premiere uh, Wednesday March 13th, exclusively on Paramount Plus. Uh, with another project I wanted to ask you that you're working on, I'm not sure how much you can discuss it, but you're currently developing a sci-fi thriller Tartarus with John Boyega, who obviously we all know his work. Uh, is that uh, is that something, how far along in the production process is that? We are trying to put that together now. Um, and I wish I could give you a firm answer because I wish I knew, <laughs> but that's sort of the nature of this business. Sure. But, it's a phenomenal project that, you know, I hope uh, I hope we get to make. And one last question. I know our time's running to an end here. I got to ask you, obviously, with my audience, I have to ask you about Power Rangers. Uh, just uh, the, the cast on that, you got Brian Cranston, Elizabeth Banks, Bill Hader as the voice of Alpha 5. Was that, uh, how, how, how invested were you in Power Rangers? Was that something you grew up with? Was that a, were you a fan of the franchise before you were offered the, the movie? Or how did that come about? Yeah, I was a fan. I grew up on Power Rangers um, and and was a, a big fan of it. And uh, I had to win that job. So <laughs> I, I went in. I, I wasn't offered that movie. I had to go in and really sort of put big presentations together to win the job. Um, and I think that Haim Saban, who ultimately was the, the decision maker, sort of saw that I really respected um, the franchise that they had created and, and, um, yeah, that was fun. I can only imagine it was a great movie. Uh, I had a great time seeing that one and I'm sure everyone will be excited also to see little wing again, premiering on Paramount plus exclusively starting Wednesday, March 13th. Dean Israelite. I appreciate your time so much. Thank you and have a great rest of your day. You too. Thanks for having me. There he goes. Dean Israelite. Make sure you check out little wing. That'll be a fantastic movie. We're going to take Another very brief commercial break. We'll come back talking with Sandy King Carpenter and Cullen Bunn about their brand new graphic novel, Long Haul, from Storm King Comics. You're listening to Geek to Me Radio on the Big 550 KTRS. Please stand by. Hello, nurses. This is Wacko, the Animaniacs, and you're listening to Geek to Me Radio. And do you know why? Because you know what's fabu. Welcome back to geek to me Radio. I'm your host, James Enstall. We'll make sure we tell you about our official comic book sponsor, Bugs, Comics, and Games. Lots of cool comic book movies out there. We were just talking with Michael from the Hero Complex about the slew of movies that have come out just in the past 25 years since the launch of the original X-Men movie back in the year 2000. And you think about all the comic books out there. Maybe you are a longtime comic book collector and you're looking to fill a couple holes in your collection. Maybe you don't have an amazing Spider-Man 129. Or maybe, you know, you've got some modern comics, but you don't have the first appearance of Echo, new season, a new series on Disney+. Plus. Check out Bugs, Comics, and Games. It's a brick-and-mortar comic book shop. And, and that's important. I like going to, I don't like dealing with online places if I can avoid it. I like going to a brick and mortar store, get to know the owner, go inside, browse the back issues, look at the new comics. That's a lot of fun to do. And you get that experience with Larry at Bugs Comics and Games. He owned his own comic book shop back when I was, before I had my driver's license for crying out loud, I used to get on my bike and ride all the way from my house. Uh, up by Hazelwood Central all the way down uh, to West Florissant Road where he had his first shop and get my comics. 
I love the fact that here I am 30 years later, I'm still going to Larry for my comic books. That makes me happy. Uh, you'll be happy too. Check them out. Go to Bugs Comics and Games right there on Bryan Road in O'Fallon, Missouri, where you can easily get to it from either Highway 70 or from Highway 364. Check them out. Join the Avengers Club while you're there. Say, hey, I heard about you on the radio. Uh, what's this Avengers Club? You're going to start saving money on your weekly comics, your new comics, your back issues, your toys, your games. In this economy, save money where you can. Don't give up your hobby. Save some money. Join the Avengers Club and start a pull list. That way you don't miss some comics. That new Sabretooth War that's going on in the current Wolverine series. Some of those issues have sold out other places. I always get mine because it's on my pull list. So Larry puts aside a nice pristine copy for me waiting in my cubby every week when I go in. It's a great thing to do. So start your pull list. And of course, if you like comics and you're not in the greater St. Louis, St. Charles area, check them out on Instagram at Bugs Comics and A-N-D Games. You can see what he's got up for sale on Instagram. If you see something you like, say claim He'll send you a PayPal invoice, and off you go. You've got your comic book sent to you, very securely packaged. Larry's been doing this for a while. As I stated, he knows his stuff. No one better to buy your comic books from. Check him out. Again, Bugs Comics and Games on Facebook. Give the Facebook page a like, and make sure you check him out. Bugs Comics and Games. Very proud to have them as the official comic book sponsor here on geek to me Radio. Speaking of comics, a whirlwind weekend. So as you know, I was not here in studio, but I gave you a brand new show. Hopefully you enjoyed my interview with the cast of Warrior now on Netflix. And make sure you check out that show. It's, I'm, I'm slowly savoring each episode, but it's gorgeous. My goodness. So if you haven't had a chance to check out Warrior when it originally aired on Cinemax, all three seasons are now on Netflix. Check it out because I want a season four more than just about anything. So make sure you check that out. Hopefully you enjoyed that episode that I left you last week while I was at uh, Planet Comic Con in Kansas City. Then I went to Burbank for Transformers Con. I could almost do an entire show about all the stuff I got to do and all the people I got to see. Finally got to meet Paul Eiding in person, a fantastic human being, and it was so great to see him in person. He's been on the show now several times, uh, the voice of Perceptor, uh, Metal Gear Solid, stuff like that, and he's just a fantastic individual. Uh, got to see Greg Berger again, who's just a, another wonderful human being. I got to talk to Ron Friedman, the guy who wrote the Transformers, the movie 1986 screenplay. Can't even express to you what a great time I had this weekend. It was exhausting going from Planet Comic Con back to St. Louis, flying out to Burbank and coming back. But I suffer for my my art. What can I say? A great time, fantastic time. And uh, if I saw you at those cons, I appreciate you taking the time to say hey to me when you saw me. But while I was at Planet Comic Con, I had the chance to interview Sandy King Carpenter and Cullen Bunn. Sandy King Carpenter, the wife of John Carpenter, she's a famous movie producer. She worked on John Carpenter's Vampires, obviously, uh, but she does all these great movies. And she started Storm King Productions, which now has offshoot Storm King Comics. They've done a lot of cool stuff. I got to talk to her about that. And Cullen Bunn, one of the writers she's brought on to do this great graphic novel, Long Haul. They sent me a PDF copy. I was riveted. I mean, it's amazing. We're going to talk about all that now with the two of them. Here's my interview with them from Planet Comic Con. We're at Planet Comic Con. We're talking with the people behind Storm King Comics. We've got Sandra King Carpenter and we've got Cullen Bunn with their new project, Long Haul. Thank you both for your time today. Thanks for having us. Thanks. And so, I'm Sandy. I'm only Sandra of when my mother used to be because of and she's dead, so it doesn't count. Okay, well, I'm not, I'm not upset with anybody, so we'll, we'll make it Sandy then. There you go. Yes. We'll, get, we'll get you there. Don't worry. <laughs> So with Long Haul, I was very kind. You sent me the PDF. I was able to look through it. And the word I came up with was just visceral. It is very intense. Um, it's not something, I wouldn't say it's a comic for the faint of heart. So talk a little bit. We'll start with Sandy about the, the genesis for Storm King as a whole before we dwell down into it. Uh, well, Storm King is, is the company I produce movies from. And, and make comic books from and podcasts and everything else. So uh, when we decided to make comics, which was totally a um, talk about visceral, it was I was annoyed with a, with a uh, uh, movie studio mm. over a project. And at some point they had said, uh, about a TV series we were pitching. Well, it's not like we're matching to a graphic novel or anything. And I said, well, actually it is. And um, went home, and my husband John said, so how'd it go? And I said, great, we're doing a comic book. <laughs> and he said, what do we know about comics? And I said, nothing, but like everything else, we'll learn. 
and uh, it was spent, I spent two years researching the, the business and the art of comics. It's, it's like when people think they can make a movie because they've seen a lot of them. The big thing you have to do is research what's different about this storytelling format from the ones we were used to. And there were some very uh, generous people in the comic industry that we knew from having been at conventions with movies and stuff. Uh, people were generous with their time and talent. And by editing other people with RIP, um, it helped me learn to write comics uh, while they were writing comics mm. with us. And um, that's how we got Storm King Comics. But what we're lucky enough to have now is uh, the ability to attract some great talent like Cullen and uh, other writers who work with us. And Cullen pitched a story to me that I thought was just... I, th I think great horror is, is uh, based in reality mm -hmm. and based in uh, what our inner fears are about who we might be and who the other guy might be. And those are the things that stick with you yeah, and make you wonder who you would be if you didn't have to look in the mirror. Yeah. And with the story, once I read it and everything like that, I know you had the preamble that you as a little kid thought you might grow up to be a trucker. <laughs> so is this, this probably this isn't what you imagined it would be like, obviously, but these are some you heard stories and some horror stories and everything and just went to your deepest, darkest place with this. Talk about the plot of this. Yeah. Um, so... Uh, my writing partner on this, Heath Amodio, called me one day and he said, do you know how many serial killers they say are active on the highways at any given moment? And there was some some unbelievable number. It was, you know, crazy. And I, I looked into it and I said, wow, that's, it's, really, it's really disturbing to me. And he said, what do you know about trucking? And much like Sandy with comics, and I was like, nothing. But, but I grew up in an era where trucking was almost this... Uh, it was like almost a hero. It was like a, a hero thing for me. Sure. You look, you know, there were movies. Uh, my uncle Shorty was a tr was a trucker. My uncle Billy was a trucker, and they would take me as a little kid and take me with them on their trips and stuff. So I was always fascinated by it. And uh, and Heath was. And I said, well, Heath, you've got to watch a couple of movies. You got to watch Convoy. You got to watch. Yeah. You got to watch Duel. Uh, you got to listen to some Dick Curlis music. I wanted some. I was like, you got to really get some trucking in your DNA here. And uh, but. It just came. Most of my stuff, I do a lot of supernatural elements yeah. to my, and I, I, admittedly, I prefer that. But this one, I was like, all right, this what what's weird about this one is it's for me was it's real world, and that makes it really that that you said visceral, mm -hmm. and that's what I think gives it because, <laughs> as my dear departed mother used to say, that could happen, you know, and and it's uh, it's one of those stories that you go out here and you, my dad was also a, a door to door salesman, so we traveled all over the country mm -hmm. and we spent a lot of time at truck stops you know he had his cb radio going all the time and there's some places you're like oh this it's kind of maybe i shouldn't be here at right. this moment and i wanted that feeling in the comic i wanted it this this feeling maybe we shouldn't be here and this is what happens when you are you know this yeah. is what could happen uh, heaven forbid but yeah right. and i think that's why it feels sort of you know visceral and gritty and and I don't like saying mean, but it's kind of a mean comic. It's yeah, a you know, I agree. and and, uh, and that's what I that's what I like. That's what drew me into this story, is the potential for that meanness. <laughs> and it's so funny because there are obviously different types of horror, as you both well know. There's the supernatural kind, there's the slasher kind, but then there's that real world. Like I think of the Kurt Russell movie where his wife vanishes at a truck stop. Yeah, I don't like that. Movie. There's there's all sorts of those real world things because you think like yeah, I'm probably not gonna have a demon under my bed. But someone could get kidnapped yeah. at a truck stop. So, what when you think of horror, and you're somewhat of an expert here, what frightens you most? Reality. I mean, I, I I'm very much drawn to what we can do to each other. I'm very much afraid of of uh, what's in people's hearts mm -hmm. more than I am that a demon's going to come up from under the bed. Right. Uh, I think that, you know, horror is an allegorical medium, and it allows us to process our fears of all kinds of things. And one of the things I try and do at Storm King is uh, 
feed those fears <laughs> for everyone and have, uh, I like to say, like in our, our yearly anthology, it's like a box of chocolates of horror. So that that's a balanced bunch of stuff of haunted houses and psychological horror and other things. And then what I try and do with the various imprints inside that, like Dark and Twisted and uh, those, is explore what things scare different people. Explore the different avenues your mind can go down. And it's like a great roller coaster that you can come out of alive. Yeah. That's, well, but that's kind of how I felt. It was such a, you see some of the pages, the artwork goes perfectly with your words, and it, some of those were just gut punches. Like, not to spoiling, the, the guy, he gets the hook through the leg, and I was like, oh, because you kind of see it coming, but you, yeah. you want, and as violent as it is, you're kind of rooting for the lesser of the two bad guys because they're out to get their, save their sister. Right. Are, is it fun to write those kind of damaged characters who are still trying to do what they think is the right thing? Yeah, uh... Years ago, I read a, st- a short story by Joe Lansdale, uh, and I remember, I couldn't tell you the story right now off the top of my head. I think I know, but I'd get it wrong. But I remember it had a little a little subtitle that said, A Story of Black Hats versus Black Hats. Mm. And I love that. And I, and I always, characters who, uh, a perfect person is, can, be a, int- can be an interesting character. But these broken characters, these characters who have nothing to lose, these characters who have already lost it all, right. these characters who are doing the wrong thing for the right reasons, I love those. Those are much more interesting to me. Yeah. And, uh, and I think they're a little more realistic. We're all, we're all a little broken. Yeah. yeah, I think that they reveal the dark corner of the perfect person. Mm-hmm. Something that's being hidden. Because... If you live a whole life, there's something you've been exposed to that's still a little like that somewhere. Yeah. Um, Or something, what would you do if? And again, that horror allows us to investigate those things or those things that you might get your wish fulfillment another way. And exercise those thoughts. And to that point, I'm going to nerd out for a minute because one of my favorite vampire movies is John Carpenter's Vampires. Love that movie. And that was, I didn't see that turn of the Pope being in league. Spoilers for those of you who haven't seen this movie 20 years on, but it's your fault, isn't it? Um, But that was such a fun movie and it had that same element where you think this is a Pope. But then you see he's making this deal to become immortal. So absolutely, I just had to say, brilliant movie, by the way. And it was the Cardinal. We did, the Cardinal, we did, I'm sorry, we the Cardinal, yes, We yes, did yes. not mess with the Pope. Right, no, no, the Cardinal. Um, you know, and it was interesting because, uh, you know, periodically we get uh, censored by, by the Catholic Church for various other movies. But that one, we actually got support from the Catholic Church because of the Father Guido uh, character. Yeah, yeah. And I went, yes, we finally won <laughs> over the Catholics. Um, you know, but I think that, uh, you know, it's it's fun to investigate characters that um, have issues of faith. Uh, the priest who's lost his faith or is doubting, and someone else who doesn't seem to care, who finds faith. Mm-hmm. Um, all of those things are the more um, uh, interesting parts as you grow up and are looking at mortality or looking yeah. at you know what's at the end of the road that you can one of the reasons I like writing the adult uh, horror comics is we get to explore our fears and things as Adults, which aren't the same fears you have as kids and as teenagers. And again, to nerd out on this side, I'm a big fan of your Sinestro series, where it's another one of those black hats. He's a bad guy. You know he is, but he, he takes the center. And some of those comic books are so interesting. When you see the bad guy, get their own series. Uh, when you're writing for something like X-Men or something you know DC-related like Sinestro, or you're doing Harrow County, are those almost exercising different muscles of your creative brain, or does it all come from the same place? How would you describe doing that versus something like long haul? Well, it's 
it does it does take their different skill sets because with something like uh, with Harrow County it's or long haul it's me you know it's mm-hmm. it, well in long haul it's Heath and you know we're right. you know we're telling a story and it's our it's it's what we want to tell uh, with like a book like Sinestro it was I knew I had to deal with the hurdles of DC's editorial mm-hmm. mandates and what they had planned for the series and you have to just balance that and be prepared for it because there's, there are going to be curveballs they try to throw. But my goal with all of that stuff, and the stuff I think has been the most successful in those licensed comics or work for hire comics, I always treat it like it's creator owned. Mm. I, I always say I'm going to write this like I stole it. <laughs> and 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 Sinestro was a that was I treated Sinestro like a creator owned comic. And luck, you 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 know you deal with different editorial teams, different departments within a company, and it's always a different. You don't know what's going to happen. Luckily, I had a great editorial team. Was like, yep, go for it. Yeah. Sometimes you don't get that. Sometimes you get a, you know a lot of roadblocks along the way or hurdles you have to crawl under. I'm right. not going to jump them. I got to crawl. <laughs> uh, but you know, it, so they're they're different. But I always want to treat these books like creator own, even if they're not. I want it to feel creator own and I think the most successful stuff I've done in you know in at Marvel or DC for instance is, is the stuff that I really just basically it was my my story yeah um, and it's a uh, and then creator own stuff is it, it writes faster sure it uh, it's more uh, look it's more fun to write for me and for some people it's not you know that's it, a lot of people come their dream is to work on Spider-Man sure and that's what they want to do, and go for it. Yeah. And that's what they're going to have fun doing. Great. I, I mean, I love writing those characters, but it's more fun for me to do my own thing. Yeah, and, yeah. And with Long Haul, it's a complete story. Um, everything's resolved. Going forward, let's say someone's like, oh, my gosh, this was amazing. I want more of this. What would you tell them? Is Are there more stories in the same realm coming? Is it going to be, well, we're going to offer similar stories but different Veins, like you said, almost like a, a box of chocolates where they'll get more, but it might not be the exact same. What would you say to people who want more of this? I'd say to them, just keep reading Storm King comics. You'll <laughs> find some. You know, I'm happiest as an owner and editor when the writers are excited because then we get the best stuff. I love when people are really tired of the strictures of DC and Marvel and just want a vacation. Yeah. I'm not saying quit. I'm saying, do you have a dream of something dark and twisted? Do you have a, a dream of something you wish you could... Even with the kids' uh, horror comics that I do, sometimes someone has a, has a kid and they want to really write a ghost story sure. or something Absolutely. like that. And it doesn't fit with anybody else. Well, come on over, you know, because I have a lot of the adult comic writers who just want to do one. Yeah. And um, so I get some of the best writers, I think, who just want to take a little break from the My Little Ponies or or Spider Man. They don't want to abandon. Right. Um, they just have a story they want to tell. And I give a lot of freedom because I respect uh, artists and writers who have vision. Yeah. And uh, I think you've got one, by the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> one, of the, one of the best right here. Do you know how lucky I am? <laughs> and do you dream of something dark and twisted? I don't know if you guys use that for the tagline because that's actually the pickup line my wife used on me. So I'd have to copyright it. But uh, Storm King Comics, again, you can check them out. We'll put a website. If you're watching this after the fact, go down to the story notes and we'll have a link in there. If people want to keep up with you guys individually as a company, where are you? Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, websites? Run all of that as Storm King uh, Comics. It's easy to find us. We're Storm King everything. Um, and to find me individually, I'm, uh, who am I? I'm, I'm Sa- uh, SKC or Sandy King Carpenter, somewhere. I'm, I'm the, and Cullen? Uh, yeah, CullenBun.com, and then on all the socials, it's at Cullen Bun. Perfect. So it should be easy. Hi. Sandy King Carpenter, Cullen Bun, I appreciate your time today. Good luck. Break legs going forward. We appreciate Thank it. Thanks. Thanks. Great, great 
graphic novel. Great company if you want to check out something new, some alternative Storm King comics. Uh, comes highly recommended by this guy here, and you can't see it because it's radio, but I'm pointing to myself. <laughs> um, this has been such a fun show. I'm, I always get invigorated when I come back from not being here in the studio because I just love this so much. I love doing this. I love that all of you listen all the time. I thank you for your texts and your messages and uh, letting me know that you're listening. If you haven't already done so, please go to my YouTube, youtube.com. Just search geek to me Radio. Hit the subscribe button. So we can increase the subscribers there and then hit the little bell notification. That way, every time Joey V is sitting across from me and we go live, you'll get a little pop up that says, hey, guess what? They're doing a live show and you'll be notified and you can join us with the video portion. Sometimes my guests are on video as well. That's always cool to see. My thanks again to Michael Hara from the Hero Complex. Thank you, of course, to Dean Israelite, the movie Little Wing. Make sure you check that out. And thank you to both Sandy King Carpenter and Cullen Bunn for their time. Thanks for Planet Comic Con for the offer of being allowed to interview those two fine people. Thank you to Bugs Comics and Games. Thank you to the City of St. Charles, Greater St. Charles Convention and Visitors Bureau. Thank you to you, the listener. And as always, thank you to Joey B for making the show sound and look as good as it does. Until next week, my friends. It's not in the way you play Mario Kart. It's not in the way you look when you make him a throw trap and say, Thank you.